Hey guys. I'm Jerry. I'm Sierra. We're ladies. And we tangent. Have, At the park? I'm sorry. Just real quick, I wanted you to know I trimmed my eyebrows <laughs> and I had one stuck in my lip gloss. Oh, that makes sense. A trimmed thought, eyebrow lash. <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, I shaved my mustache and <laughs> a little bit here. Eyebrow makes way more sense. Yeah, no, I did my mustache yesterday. <laughs> um, in the bathroom, um, we were talking about mustaches for oh. some reason. I don't know why. And Ollie went, mustache? And Shane like hid part of his beard and he goes, this, this is a mustache to show him. And he goes, mommy mustache. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, only in the sun. Anyway. <laughs> when Noah was three, he was at school and he drew a picture and I was like, what's that? And he's like, that's you. And I was like, oh, cool. And he's like, and there's your mustache. <laughs> I was like, tight. Thank Love you. that. Love the, the in real. In front of his teacher. Yeah. The realistic Perfect. lifelike qualities you gave me. Um. Anyway. Sorry. Saw the girl at the park and Shane's like, isn't that the girl you used to babysit? And I was like. Is it? Who they used to babysit? The flower girl, my wedding. Oh, okay. So yeah, it was her. Um, That's what I she's was. nine now. Yes, obviously, she's Noah's she's, age. Yeah, so didn't it's recognize very, her almost. Yeah, yeah. And they grow up like in those from like five to nine is just like different person. Insane. Yes, yeah. they do like the sim thing where they're like boop 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 boop. <laughs> yeah, no new human. But I called her mom and I was like did I just see your daughter at the park? And mm -hmm. she's like, I was just thinking about you yesterday. And I was like, really? And she goes, you came up on my TikTok. And I was like, was it my poop video? <laughs> and she's like, it was your poop video. And I was like, okay, I'm going to come say hi. So I went to see her and her father-in-law, who was the dad of one of my brides, comes up to me and he goes, hey, are you on the TikTok? And I'm like, oh my God. And was I on your for you? Yes. <laughs> He's like, you, you and that other girl, you were on my TikTok. And I'm like, what? Why? What? Very all, shocked. What's your algorithm? Yeah. There's been a couple older men that have commented and they are passing the vibe check just <laughs> splendidly because they're like, love this. <laughs> love this, girls. Keep it up. <laughs> like, Thanks, you may Grandpa. ride this ride. <laughs> yeah. Not this ride. No. no. <laughs> Grandpa, come on. <laughs> yeah. But um, I will say the amount of people who are convinced that I am drunk in that or high I know. is alarming. I, and somebody's like, Haha, ha, so I guess girls are funny when they're drunk. And I'm like, I fucking was sober. <laughs> was I drunk? I think oh, you might I was have been... very drunk. Yeah. <laughs> I was drunk. But yeah. I was so sober, and I was doing the most of the uh, explicit yeah. talking. So I'm like, give me some fucking, give give the sober girl some credit, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only my humor comes from <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> Well, I was only slightly offended because someone was like, see, drunk girls are like, drunk girl conversations are sober guy conversations. And I was like, would it shock you to know that I'm like this fucking all the time? Yeah, for sure. I worked at a restaurant for too long. The things I talk about are uncomfortable. And, um, and I taught at a high school. Um, and also, I don't know why what's in between our legs has to dictate what comes out of my mouth, you yeah. fucking weirdo. Absolutely. Let me talk about what I want to talk about. And don't tell me that, like, because I'm a girl, I have to talk about certain things. Yeah, who? You weirdo. Since when is, like, humor gendered? Thank uh, Well, <laughs> ask one specific gender and they'll tell you. Because <laughs> no women were on there yeah. saying, oh, look, funny women. A lot of guys yeah. were. <laughs> there was one comment from a girl. And I, I responded to you if you took offense to this. <laughs> but sh she said... Am I the only person who doesn't think this is funny? And I said, probably not. But you are the only one who took the time to voice to it here. say something. Yeah. So. And so, like, I don't, I don't care if people don't think I'm funny. Uh, you know what? Sometimes I listen back and I don't think I'm funny. Same. Sometimes, uh, shock. I was shocked by how many people were like, I'm literally pissing my pants laughing. I'm like, I wasn't that funny. <laughs> That's not our best work. Yeah. No, but there are sometimes people will comment about things and I'm like, oh, I didn't. That, first of all, that wasn't meant to be a joke. Right. Or, or I didn't think it was funny that people thought was funny. And that's the beauty of humor yep. is it's, you subjective. know. Subjective. Yeah. Humor is subjective. That's but, the best part about humor. But what I don't understand is taking your valuable time to, oh, this is going to get trolls after us. I know it. But to take your valuable no, they're time. They're listening to us. They like us, I feel. Oh, I hope. Oh. I hate, hate listening and hate watching is a thing. That but, is true. I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't imagine using my time to be like, 
This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Am I the, Send. First of all, also, you saw the, she must have seen that there was over like 9,000 comments at that point. Who did you think was going to see it and agree with you, except for us who have yeah. been stalking the comments? That was one of the only ones I saw. Really? Well, I saw like, yeah, that was one of the only ones I saw. I've been like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Oh, I lied. a lot of, oh. There was one I saw that was like, I'm sorry, did anyone see her cup floating? <laughs> this is a clear picture frame, actually. It's half of a picture frame, but I, I thought use it, it was white. I was commenting back. I'm like, it's a white coaster. It's, it's not a, even white. It's, it's clear. a clear picture frame that I use as a coaster. So <laughs> it's not floating, but I love an optical illusion. <laughs> yes. So, oh, that's funny. There was one other thing I was going to say about it. Just because my life has been so strange the last it, Yeah, days. if you guys are unaware, like if you're um, uh, listeners before this week or before this episode, um, f- something happened. We don't know how Gotta it happened. Gotta be Mercury. Yeah. But we gained like 200,000 followers on TikTok yeah. in like two days. And we got, one of our TikToks went viral, but like a week after we posted it, which almost was two. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was like really behind. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and one of them got taken down. I know, I saw that. The TikTok about your mom splitting her like ham ears. You know, she she probably reported it. She was like, I'm embarrassed. Get this it, off of here. It said because of adult nudity. And I was like, she was fully clothed <laughs> when she did that. She was just moaning in pain. So, and they're like, we can't have anyone talking about moaning, but we'll keep your poot one going. <laughs> but we will talk about. I told Corey, I was like. And it, queefs. I know, I said, um, it's a little bit interesting when you think about it, that I've gone viral now, we have yeah. several times for talking about our pubes, yeah, <laughs> for talking about sending nudes, s- sending nudes, um, and for talking about farting or queefing yeah. during sex. <laughs> yeah, that is what I'm known I just for. Like on to call the that internet. the human experience. Thank you. People are like, you're so relatable. Someone said something about like I didn't know girls talked about this and I was like what we all fart motherfucker <laughs> yeah why wouldn't we talk about it yeah you think we're just like you think locker room talk is only <laughs> reserved for guys and also why does it have to be locker room talk we all fart yeah. let's fucking talk about well, it because it's society funny. says we can't talk about farting, farting I crop dust people at the grocery store like it's my job and like I don't even try <laughs> yeah, to make but... it quiet Shane looks at me like did you really just loudly <laughs> rip ass here and I was like who's gonna say something <laughs> The most they're going to do is give me kind of like a mm, Uh, while they're walking away. You got to give me six feet anyway right now, buddy. Okay. (laughs) So good fucking luck. (laughs) That's that's a you problem. All right. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of funny, we're talking about humor as a coping mechanism today, ladies and gentlemen. Yay. Because, uh, well, there's a lot of reasons. Yeah. Well, um, I saw people talking about this in the Fangins page. We said this a million times. Like, you want to get our attention. Go, Go on that. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> um, but Bo Burnham came out with a new special called Inside on Netflix. Yes. And I don't know if you guys know this. We probably have said this before, but that was Shane and I's first date. We And I've just always been obsessed with Bo yeah. Burnham. I hate to say this, Corey, if you're listening, don't. Oh, yeah, he's listening. <laughs> but if there is one person who could take me away <laughs> from him, it would be that man. <laughs> but he's Corey so physically that. not your type. No, no, not at all. But he's got the humor, musical, yes. witty, all of it, intelligent. Into, I just yeah. think he's a genius. I yeah. think he is a oh, genius. Yeah. And I'm, I'm capped. Like I said this while we were watching it <laughs> because of you. Uh-huh. But I was like, God, I love the way his mind works. Mm-hmm. That was like mm-hmm. the biggest compliment. I love the way his mind works. Hundred percent. It is fascinating. Like I don't even think I would want to physically be intimate with him i just want to like sit and s- watch him <laughs> is that what you're <laughs> you would orgasm just by listening to him speak <laughs> no i'm like tell me your creative thought process and go <laughs> hold on don't mind this buzzing <laughs> <laughs> this is distracting <laughs> i'll turn it down <laughs> you get into the setting where it's like quiet and then all of a sudden it goes zzz, and then quiet again for like 10 seconds that's like that's that intermittent. <laughs> it gives you a little buzz, buzz. Oh. Uh, but seriously, did I? Oh my god, am I gonna say this? What? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, did I ever tell you about my first experience with that? No. <laughs> 
Shane and I were long distance. Oh. And I had never had one before. It was the first time I went to the porn store with Jessica and the guy with the I dildo that I love that, that you flopped. still say her name like that. Jessica. <laughs> Jessica. Um, that's Sorry. from like the hills, isn't it? Yes. Okay. But what did you, what, the guy with the what? The big black dildo that he flopped down on the table like he was a regular. <laughs> oh, okay. That's from another episode yeah. if you guys go back and find that one. Yeah. Anyway. That that was the first time I made a purchase. Okay, oh my gosh. I went home, like I was about to have my first time, <laughs> and I made a playlist. Oh I lit a candle. <laughs> the lights were low, and I, was... and I turned on Ed Sheeran, <laughs> and then I turned on someone else. <laughs> I named it Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. It was pink. <laughs> of course you named it Beyonce. Yeah. Oh. Well, I didn't want to cheat and name it a male name. No, for sure. So, but that's one woman that <laughs> she I, can you do know, it. Yeah. She could bow burn of you. <laughs> she could bow burn of me. You're like, bow burn of could bow burn of me. <laughs> You're like, hold on, Beyonce, just sing lemonade. <laughs> 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 oh, the, the entire album. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is a captivating masterpiece mm-hmm. in itself. Again, I love the way her mind works. I have the film on my phone. <laughs> not not for the reason we were just talking about. <laughs> for some reason, I thought you were talking about the first time, but I was like, you have that on your phone. I do not have that on my phone. You kept it? No. It was magical. I wanted to record it. I no. play it every Father's Day. <laughs> All of a sudden, Ed Sheeran silently <laughs> plays in the background. Oh, uh, that's funny. Anyway, but yeah, Bo Burnham. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, what's it called? Like objectify him. <laughs> but also, <laughs> but also, I don't know. <laughs> but also eh? did you see his ass cheeks? <laughs> I did. And the white woman Instagram one. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> first of all, <laughs> that's a nice fucking butt. <laughs> Watching white woman's Instagram. Were you a little triggered? Because I was. <laughs> triggered? No. I was like, oh, I feel no. like attacked. <laughs> I looked at Shane and I was like, oh, if you guys haven't seen it, just stop listening to us and go watch it. Yeah, seriously. It is an emotional roller coaster, it I is. feel like. It's it, very intense. I, I love that the most, and I'll tell you about it when yeah. you're done with the story, why I love it the most. <sighs> But desperately, I'm trying to hold on to this story. I don't remember what we were talking about. Old white woman's Instagram. And you okay. said to Shane, I said to Shane, I want to recreate all of these photos. <laughs> yeah. It was cinematically, be- well, the whole thing was just perfection. But yes. like the white woman's Instagram part, it, he's going through and talking about all the things you would probably find on a white woman's Instagram, like yes. tiny pumpkins, a golden retriever, <laughs> like a couple holding hands. Um, uh, a latte art and i'm like i want to do I, all of I these i want to recreate all of these yeah all of these i'll photos. do it with you the one where he's laying on the ground with the daisies in his eyes <gasps> and the daisies around his hair amazing <laughs> amazing so good and he did all of that from the comfort of his home i don't Alone. know about comfort but well, yeah yeah um from I the was... psychosis of his home <laughs> i know i was going to say um I've seen a lot of, there's been two different people. There's been people who are like, I love this. He's a creative genius. And then there's people that are like, I'm worried about yeah. him because. I flounder between those two. I was at first. And then I stopped to think about it. Number one, he would not have let us in if he, I think, if he was truly struggling. Because if you know Bo Pause. Burnham. If you guys haven't seen it. It's called Inside, and he did this over an entire year. He filmed, recorded, wrote, directed everything by himself Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. over the course of a year. He was alone making this special. Okay, sorry, go ahead. But I was just, he doesn't make mistakes. Like, even in his stand-ups, when you think something that he messed up, it's part of the show. And I love that about him. So I think it was almost one of the most brilliant like comedic takes on toxic positivity. Yes. Because he was, I feel like he was showing like, look, I can still be funny. I want to be funny for you guys. Right. But I'm also a real person who's experiencing these very real emotions yeah. as we all did yeah. over this last year. And I think that's important to talk about too. And not a lot, other, not a lot of other com- comedic people do that. And yeah. a lot of people in comedy struggle with mental illness, especially oh, yeah. depression and anxiety. Yeah. A lot. And that's why, like, Sierra and I were talking about this because we love Bo Burnham and um, we 
are two people who use humor as a coping mechanism. And I've heard before that humor is an unhealthy coping mechanism, but I found that there's like four different types of humor. Yeah, I saw that too. And that not all of them are necessarily negative. And it actually, uh, I have a couple videos I wanted to reference, but I also have a, a study from Stanford that they did on coping using humor as a coping mechanism for a trauma. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um do you do you want to go into that and then I'll go into my videos and then we we're going to discuss kind of like the Bo Burnham situation in in general throughout yeah. it. Well, because I think this this is especially important because he kind of touches on this a little bit um when he's there's a part that he says, "God, I didn't write any of this down." And I what song is it from? I think it's from comedy. Okay, is it? Um, oh, no, I I only I took some lyrics from it. Comedy is the second song, and I wrote down, "If you wake up in a house that's full of smoke, don't panic. Call me, and I'll tell you a joke." Yeah. So, well, and there's something that he says. He says, um, "Should I really be joking at a time like this?" Yes, and he said, "Should I stop trying to be funny? Should I give away my money?" Yes. Okay, so that reminded me of there's been so much talk on like people that I I can't stand the people who are like, well, cancer culture is ruining everything, blah, blah, because I don't believe in cancer culture, that it's real. First of all, I believe it's consequence culture and that it's necessary for growth. I think we all could learn and do better at the same time. Yeah. Now that we're on TikTok, now that we have a platform. I kind of fucking understand that line because we have people who don't know us, Mm -hmm. who have never heard us, who don't know anything about us, who are listening to a one minute snippet of something we're saying, taking that out of context and trying to spin it like we're bad people. When I talked about my DUI, if you guys knew me back when that happened, I was fucking devastated by it. I was so embarrassed. I was so full of shame. I didn't tell my mom or my dad for six months that I got one because I was so embarrassed about it. And Um, this was after years of Sierra trying to come out of a really toxic situation where you're finally feeling like you're on the up and up and then another thing like knocks you down. Yes. And it was my fault. I understand that. Um, It was a mistake that I made because I am a fucking human being. Right. So when one of our TikToks went viral-ish about that, people were like, DUIs aren't funny. Of course they're not. We right. weren't fucking joking about the DUI. Right. If you had listened to the entire segment, you would have known what the joke was about right. and why I was using humor to cope with that. So this Stanford um, thing, it says Stanford psychologists find that jokes help us cope with horrifying images. So they took people and they faced, they like put up frightening scenes or yeah. really like traumatizing photographs. Um, and then they had the people who saw them try to reinterpret the situation in a, in a way to make it positive. And they said two new Stanford studies demonstrated that the most effective form of cognitive reappraisal is good natured comedy. Well, and so that's the, why I have to watch a funny show after yeah, a scary movie. Yes. And like a lot of times when we tell these stories that we're telling, when we talk about our miscarriages, when we talk about our abusive relationships, when we're laughing at those things, we don't think they're fucking funny. Yeah, and we weren't <laughs> feeling like that, they were funny when they happened. Wait, we have to retell it in a way. Because yeah. number one, who would want to listen to two people just talk about the most depressing right. shit? Yeah. You know, we're trying to make it so that you guys can tolerate listening. I don't want to make people uncomfortable. Yeah. But I want to get my story out there. Yeah. And the way to do that is to do it using humor. Um in this video that I was watching, the video is called Does Trauma Make Us Funny? The link between humor and mental health. Um, it's by Cognitive Culture on YouTube. She just recently demonetized her channel because she wants to make sure that the videos don't get broken up by ads because she thinks it's it, it interrupts like your experience. So I I don't want to talk about the entirety of the video, but I w- if you're interested, like please go support her because she does amazing work um, for free essentially on YouTube. So she's only able to continue doing this if um, people support her through Patreon and things. So I wanted to mention that. But she mentioned that 
philosophers believe that humor was created to help build, uh, help people build themselves back up after getting knocked down. Yep. Psychologists note that individuals who had more adverse childhood experiences were more likely to display personality qualities conducive to humor like wit and frankness. Mm -hmm. They believe it's tied to resiliency and it's characterized as the ability to recover from adversity. She believes that this is why we may be drawn to funny people. They make us feel like we can get through hard times too when we see them smiling through it. Yes. So like so many of you have heard us speak about really negative things in our life and you're like, wow, I feel like you gave me the courage to get through something too. And it's like, that's why we do it. That's why if we share it. If we showed you us, that's why we say we don't talk about the things that we're going through while we're going through them sometimes. We yeah. have to process them because if we showed you the rawness, it feels hopeless. Yeah. It, we don't want to give you guys hopeless. We want to show you like in that um, in Bo Burnham's Inside, yeah. I, there were moments where I was devastated and I felt like aching for him yeah. because I know those feelings he was feeling. And then two seconds later, he'd have me laughing like yeah. out loud. And I'm like, that's what I love. Yeah. Um, another thing that they said, the researchers found that subjects who made any kind of quip benefited reporting both increases in positive emotion as well as decreases in negative emotions. But those who were instructed to use positive humor saw the most effect. As a, yeah. they were giving people, they were like, you can do negative humor, any kind of humor, we don't care. Yeah. But the people who use positive humor, yeah. like not knocking down anybody, um, were able to get something out of it. And, and they weren't as traumatized, I guess, yeah. at the end of the thing. So that I thought was super important. Um, well, and I want to mention like the four different um, types of humor since you just kind of yeah, touched on it. that. So. Uh, this is from a video. <laughs> Do you like how Sierra is like referencing an article and I'm referencing a video? <laughs> <laughs> These are our learning styles. Mm -hmm. and it's okay. Um, so in the coping skills series, uh, humor by imagine life therapy, um, they, she addresses four different types of humor, <coughs> aggressive, affiliative, self-enhancing and self-defeating. Yes. So aggressive and obviously self-defeating are harmful types ones. of humor. I have humor. stuff about that too. Yeah, like aggressive humor would be um, putting down others, offending others, minimizing someone else's feelings or humiliating Inflicting them. Inflicting pain. Yeah, and I used to do that. When I say I was a bully in high school and middle school, like that's what I would do. I would mock other people yeah. because it got laughs and I didn't realize how hurtful it was to the person I was saying it to, even if they were laughing along with me. Yes. So again, when we say like comedians who are like, oh, cancel culture, there are some comedians out there who are just fucking bullies, honestly, yeah. who are just doing things to be hurtful, who are saying hurtful mm -hmm. things, who are uh, like pro or making a stigma. Yeah. More, something more stigmatized than it already was. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, furthering a negative stereotype. Yeah. Things like that. If it's not your stereotype, maybe you shouldn't joke about it. Yeah. Maybe it's not fucking funny. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or, and even if it is yours, like self defeating humor was the other one that I said is yes. negative. That can be another form of it. If, if someone's mocking you and you go along with it, it's self defeating and. She said that it erodes your self-image and uh -huh. over time it lessens your confidence. And so like you don't even have to make a self-deprecating joke. If you just go along with someone, like if it is your stereotype and you mock yourself because of yep. it and not in a way where you're trying to reclaim it, it it does one, reinforce the negativity, but also it does erode away at yourself because yeah. the more times you say something, whether it's true or not, you start to believe it. Yep. And that's... um. They said humor can help in many ways, but it can also do harm. This is from the National Alliance on Mental Illness dot org. So <laughs> NAMI dot org. But um, they said there's a kind of humor that restores our spirits. There's also sarcasm and humor that inflicts pain. Um, unacknowledged anger at another person can so often sneak out this way. Yeah. So they said the person who writing this article said, I do my best not to do this. And if I do it, I apologize when I do it anyways. This same caution applies when I direct humor inward. I've laughed at myself with contempt and fierce anger, which can be emotionally self-harming. Yeah. So I think it's like, where are you coming from with the humor? Are you right. doing it out of anger or right. are you doing it to, to, you know, make light, make of, a light of a situation? Because that's what affiliative humor and self-enhancing feud. Fewer, <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> affiliative humor and self-enhancing humor. Fucking tough. <laughs> it was hard. That's what those are. So like affiliative humor, um, it's basically socializing through storytelling or narratives. So like, for instance, 
when I told the hamster story last week, can I tell oh. you guys that that's been on my head, oh. on my head, on my mind <laughs> ever since I told it? Yes. Because I've talked to my dad about it since. The first time I told him, he, he was like, Jerry, I don't remember. I don't remember that. I need you to know that, like, <clears throat> there were three young children in the house and it was chaotic. Life was a fucking blur. Yes. And so I asked him about it again and he was like, Jerry, there's no way. If I thought that hamster was alive, <laughs> that I would have just flushed, I would have flushed it. And so when I tell that story, I kind of embellish it, sure, to make it funnier funny. because, because I'm sure what it was, a horrific thing. It was so traumatizing for you yes. as a child, and even even I don't I remember it being alive. Yeah. Could it have been not alive? Sure. Yeah, you sure. were very young. <laughs> yes. I don't remember. I I thought it was alive, but I also took a dead squirrel home one time, okay, <laughs> hoping to bring it back to life. And that is not an exaggeration. That is just a funny story in itself. But um, I would never want that story to come across as uh, us that being we neglectful were... or or making light of um, something horrific. Dying. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, like yeah. Uh, animal abuse. Yeah, that's something that we are extremely, extremely against. Yeah, but again. It's it was our way of dealing with something horrific that right. happened to and you as a child that other people had experienced other tragic like the one um, TikTok I told you guys about that someone tagged me in with the hamster someone's hamster ran directly into a fire <laughs> that's so terrible it is so terrible but it's like it's so terrible that it's funny I like, had to tell fun. a story of a squirrel it's like the elephant yes the elephant and I had I. The first time I've ever witnessed murder on <laughs> murder on a squirrel. <laughs> Actually, it was suicide yeah. <laughs> because he ran directly into an 18-wheeler. I mean, the, every single one of those wheels hit that squirrel. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and then I was behind it, and it, at the very end, at the last <laughs> wheel, it flipped the remains up into the air, and it landed on the top of my car. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I started bawling, but I couldn't. Get off the road because I was just driving, and I watched it slide off the back of my car. I was crying so hard I couldn't breathe. And when I got home to tell the story, I started laughing because I was like, "Did that just fucking happen to me? That was the worst death I've ever seen in my life." And it was, it was scary, yes. traumatic. Yes. I know, whatever. In nature, animals yeah. die, yeah. but like. Not like that. Not a, <laughs> yeah. And so not on my car. The person I think I was actually on my way to work. So oh I couldn't even God. do anything. I had to like go and start serving tables. I didn't want my eyes. I needed to stop a way to stop crying. Yeah. Because um I have to go serve fucking people. Yeah. And well, that could work in your favor. It really could. And I did tell the story a couple of times. And my tables looked at me like I was a fucking psychopath because yeah. I told it in a funny way yeah. because I had to. Yeah. If I told it in the sad way, well, I would have started crying. you just got to like feel out when is it time to tell this <laughs> funny trauma story. Right. So people looked at me like I was a psycho. And I was like, you guys, if you even knew what this yeah. did to me, I dreamt about that fucking squirrel for <laughs> days. It was horrifying. Yeah. Horrifying. But I had to flip it because if I didn't, oh my god, you said flip it, <laughs> knowing that that's what the squirrel did. No, sorry, the poor fucking bunny. My brain is so just like make it funny, make it funny, make it funny. I know because it's uncomfortable. Because who wants to sit yeah. in uncomfortability? And I get it. We're supposed to feel our feelings. That's why I like the Bo Burnham <laughs> took you between both because he didn't do like I'm gonna make this funny the entire time. He's like. I'm going to show you the real shit. I actually want to bring up exactly what you just said, but finish your squirrel story. Was that's, that it? That's it. I okay. Was, <laughs> I was trying to show that, like, I laughed, too, at an animal yeah. dying because I fucking had to. Because yeah. if I didn't, I would still think about it. Yeah. To this day. Yeah. I do sometimes. And now, like, a lesson was learned. We did not get another hamster. Right. And I will never get my children a hamster. But that's exactly why I said Hamsters are not children, pets. I know so yeah. many hamsters. I got fucked up by kids, yeah, and, and they, that's horrible. They need like a lot of care. They like do, their they, cages, they're very. I don't want to say temperamental, but like oh, we had a temperature wise, and yeah, we yeah. had a guinea pig for Noah, and I got rid of it, which was it went to a really good family. I made sure of that. Yeah, but I was like, um, I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. I was a young mom. Give me a fucking break, please. Yeah. I know it was a mistake. We've never gotten him another animal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It was, they are just always marketed to us as like yeah. children's toys they're little. almost. Yeah. And it's like, um, these are living creatures yeah. and they're 
really fast. They get out. <laughs> they get out of their cages. Well, that was the thing Houdini's. about the hamster is like, I guess it was like out of its cage all the time. I, re- I remember finding it in a drawer. I remember finding it in the closet. The I, re- yeah, I remember finding it everywhere. So like, And they can it, really squeeze through some really tight spaces. Yeah, it's, I it's know. Alarming. Don't I know it. But what I wanted to bring up about Bo Burnham was like, when he was singing in comedy during that song, it's my favorite song. When he is talking about really hard things, yes, he has a laugh track. Yes, so like he'll say something that without the laugh track wouldn't be funny, right? It would be alarming. It yeah. would be concerning and scary. But because he put the laugh track on there, it You're was like, like oh, it's a it track. disarmed me. It yeah. was like oh. He gets it. Yeah. He gets that this was scary. So to make it not scary for me, he added the laugh track. Yeah. And he did it again. Oh, he uses it in All Eyes on Me. Oh, I, First of all, All, all Eyes, Eyes on, on Me, me is, such a, <laughs> is like a jam. I Put your fucking in- hands up. <laughs> Put your fucking hands up. I was it's singing that on the way here. So good. Get up out of your feet. But then yeah. he gets a little, it's like a little manic at the end, right? Where he yes. like has that crazy yes. laughter and shit it's kind of scary yep. almost you're like oh fuck <laughs> yeah but he uses the laugh track again in there mm-hmm. um while he's talking about his panic attack so he yes. like has a spoken word part of yes. it where he's like five years ago i left comedy and by the way in the song his voice is like modified for this song yes. so it's funnier but he takes a break but his voice mod is yep. still on and then he tells this really sad story yeah about how he was having severe panic attacks on stage so he quit comedy to work on himself and he p- plays a laugh track over that yeah, and, and then he's, he's like, like i did work on myself guess what i got better and I was ready to go back in January 2020. Yeah. I was ready to come back. And you know what? The funniest thing happened. And then they play the laugh track. Yeah. And it's just like, that is a heartbreaking thing to yes. hear. But he has to do it in a way that's like, yeah, no, this is funny. And then he says in Goodbye, which is a song after that, like, I want to hear you tell a joke when no one's laughing in the background. Yes. Like, knowing that he oh, had that's to. that's going to make me cry. Right? Why is that going to make me cry? <laughs> because you're pregnant. <laughs> because I'm pregnant. Yeah, but he was talking. <gasps> I know, it's happening. I get to see you cry and it's on tape. <laughs> um, and it's over this. I don't I know. know. Hold on. Did you see that girl from Zanesville? No. <sighs> we'll have to, sh- uh, the girl that went on America's Got Talent. Uh-uh. Well, if you want to cry with me, I'll fucking show you that at the <gasps> end of this. But she says something that's the most amazing thing I've ever heard. She has cancer. Oh, God. I know. And... She writes this amazing song and she performs it. And then at the, I think it's either the end or the beginning. She says, you can't wait until life isn't hard anymore to be happy. Oh. Okay. And again, remember her struggle that she's going through. And that's why people are like, someone, I think maybe asked like, how do you have so much strength or you, you exhume so much positivity and you have so much going on. And she fucking said that. And it made me ball my eyes out because I was just like, I felt that back when I was in the trenches, man, I was trying so hard to be happy when it felt like it was impossible to be happy. And that's kind of, that was exactly what I felt wrapped in Bo's, um, in inside because it was so much like, I'm, I'm still trying to find this way to be, comedic to give you guys comedy to give you content but also i want to show you that i'm struggling because i know you guys were too right and like oh god it was just so good yeah and it's very easy to sit in the audience and laugh and he said that i don't remember if if it was in um all eyes on me or if it was in goodbye but he was saying like if when I am, I think it was in All Eyes on Me, when I'm like irrelevant, when I'm broke, like I'll call you and you can tell me a joke. Yes. Like, it's easy for you to come to me because it's my job. Yeah. When you're feeling down to make you laugh and brighten your day. But like, who do I get to go to? Yes. Who do I get to turn to? Because while I'm here creating this content that makes you happy, I am processing a lot of really difficult things. Yep. And I am having to do insane mental gymnastics to turn my life experience that is incredibly hard into content. Yep. Yep. For you guys. Yeah. Oh, there were so many good things he said. And I was going to say I, like I'm Bo. But like, (laughs) we do that. Yeah. And I enjoy it. But it, the highs are high and the lows are fucking low, dude. Yep. 
So I can't imagine, especially being as self-aware and like, um, con conscious as he is, like of everything going on in the world and feeling like this uh, accountability of needing to acknowledge that it's not a funny time, but right. also feeling like it's my job because to he make was like, it funny. We have to heal the world with yeah. comedy. That's the he basically said like that's the one thing I can give to you guys. I know this world is a shit show. That's how I feel right now yeah. too. Same thing. I know the world is a shit show. What can I do? If I can make people laugh, that makes me feel like I did something yeah. important for yeah. the world. Like because he says oh a line I love but he's like I want to leave the world a better place than when I came yeah. into it, you know? And isn't, shouldn't that be the goal of everyone? It fucking should be. Again, it shouldn't be that you woke up at 5 a.m. every day and made yourself a right. butt ton of money. Like, the, leaving the world a better place than what you came into, I think, should be all of our goals. And if your talent, like Bo, is your mind yes. and how it works and how you're able to take these complex concepts and create just incredible lyrics to have people experience something so complex that's your gift like that yeah. is you making the world a better place by using your mind yeah yeah there was a lot of i just loved there was also so many things that he i think he touched on that were important which was like i can't remember what song it was i think it was the one around the campfire nope it was the one about the internet but okay. he talks about like how Nobody's bored anymore. It says apathy's a tragedy and boredom's a crime. Anything and everything, all of the time. Could I interest you in everything, all of the time? Yes. Like that. Because that I song creeped me the fuck uh, out. Same. Because it was so like, oh Eerie. god. First of all, I don't like circuses. I don't like clowns. And so when he's like, <laughs> did it, did it, did it, and I'm like, Ugh. yeah. But I have this struggle with my son because my son is ADHD. He yeah. is a hyper focuser, especially on like video games and things like that. Um, and he, his number one like can't happen is being bored. And creativity comes from boredom. Right. Literally being creative, finding something to do. You have to be bored. Yeah. We have to get back to the point where we can be bored because right. I think that's when the most exciting shit happens yeah. is when you get to yourself where you're so bored you create shit your mind is like you know able to be yeah not focused on something else yeah. it's able to not able like to have blah, blah 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 in yeah. your ears you can think for yourself have a clear moment yeah i'll never fucking go hunting and don't you <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't even <laughs> don't even ask it's not gonna happen um Sorry, I was just jumping around now. All no, over you're fine. I'm, we're all over too. That's fine. That's that's we're on break. <laughs> <Kind of upright. laughs> um, so I'm gonna jump back to the video. Uh, Does trauma make us funny? For a minute. So her theory. This was fascinating to me. Her theory was that the reason why we laugh shares a similarity with trauma. Really? Yeah. So she says that what makes something funny is incongruity. The setup leads you to believe one thing and then the punchline comes out of nowhere and it's not what you were expecting. Yes. Same thing with trauma. Ooh, I think that's also why I liked his thing so much because he had yes. so many moments where he thought it was going to be something and I was like, well, and it he took it away. Yeah. I loved that. So like she was, the example she gave was trauma is also surprising imagine you go to get ice cream and you get in a terrible car accident yep or you, you were... see a squirrel killed on <laughs> <laughs> yes or you go to take a shit and your hamster dies <laughs> yes. um she says that like that same kind of lineup it, it mirrors each other yeah and so it's, it's something coming out of the unexpected something unexpected yes happening. Um, That's why people just, like friggin' mystery novels and things like that. We yeah. like a surprise, baby. We, I don't know if we like it, but, but it definitely point, intrigues our yeah. minds. Um, she said humor can be born out of a need for connection. If you're someone who has a lot of trauma, mental health issues, or just experiencing negativity, releasing that information to share with others is beneficial, but society doesn't say it's okay just to dump out your backpack full of trauma rocks. So Actually, true. I said this part, but your trauma rocks are your emotional baggage. Like, um, this quote is mine. The the Trauma rocks are mine, okay? <laughs> um, to people for too long. So in order to release some of that, you change the information a so little bit. They So that they absorb it in a way that is funny. So you can get it off your chest and someone else can receive it without feeling weighed down. And be entertained by it. Yes. At the same time, win-win. Yes. 
That's what a lot of comedians do. A lot of people are like, oh, that story, blah, blah, blah. Are you sure it was 100% real? Have you ever seen a comedy show? They're not yeah. telling you. No. <laughs> They're not telling you their full story. Right. They can't. You no. know, you can't let people in that much. Yeah. So you have to change little parts of it. It's and it scary. makes it funnier. Yeah. yeah. It, it. Well, yeah. You don't want to be. There's a very fine line between being vulnerable and letting people in too much because then yeah. it's like, you know, we've know people will use that shit yeah. against you. Right. So, I don't know. I just think, I just think that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I I think it's cool too. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> one of the things I wanted to do was just kind of go through some of his songs, and we've already tapped into some of them. Um, but in comedy, I wrote down the line: "Should I stop trying to be funny? Should I give away my money?" No, that t- <laughs> that <laughs> no. was my favorite. <laughs> to me, like if he's if you're saying that as a joke. You most certainly thought about it seriously at yes. one point in time. He probably felt helpless. Yeah. Like, this world is a shit show and I don't know what to do. Like, do I stop trying to just distract people from it? And you also get a bit of survivor's guilt. Yeah. In a way where yes. it's like, oh my God, look at all these people suffering and I'm benefiting in a way. Or I I'm shouldn't not be, suffering. Yeah. yeah. And I shouldn't be not profiting off of them, but like, I shouldn't be profiting in any way that's yeah. how i feel when this started getting successful yeah i was like but what about all the people <laughs> like we couldn't have success if everybody didn't yeah. which was a, a sad thought it's yeah. kind of crazy because everybody deserves that right but you feel it's like survivor's guilt it, yeah it's like you can't get into the boat until everyone else is in the boat yes. and then it's like but then you drown yeah so then you so never then go in the boat. And then the, all the bad people are in the boat. Yeah. Because they don't give a shit. That's why they tell you to put your mask on first yes. on the airplane. Yes. Oh, my God. Did I tell you? <laughs> this was an embarrassing thing that happened to me when I was on the airplane. My backpack, I told you, was huge. The biker tried to help me. He thought it was full of bricks. <laughs> yeah. And it barely fit under the seat. And so I'm trying to get it out of the seat. And already I can't fully stand up because I'm in an airplane and I'm trying to pick this backpack up and it gets caught on the chair. (gasps) They are not lying about those things being flotation device. That thing popped right the (laughs) fuck off. It was only stuck on there with Velcro. (laughs) So now I'm standing there with my backpack and and my seat. (laughs) <laughs> and I was like, oh. I looked at Sorry, the- I thought we were going down. <laughs> <laughs> we were already landed. Oh no. <laughs> <That's worse. laughs> so now everyone's just standing and staring at me. And and y- I feel nervous because everyone's trying to get off and everyone's trying to do single file and yep. it's my turn and I, I just <laughs> uh, got my flotation <laughs> Where should I put this? <laughs> <laughs> so, I looked at the two people sitting next to me and I go, Oh, they weren't kidding about this, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and they were like yeah. I, don't, I don't think they joke about that. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to go now. I would joke about it, but that's just, that's my humor. <laughs> go be reckoned as You guys know that if you die, your sheets can come off and then they go to do it. And you're like, ah, fucking got you fuckers. <laughs> All right, let's die. <laughs> you you, not. you didn't right. want to survive this anyways, trust me. <laughs> Oh, I saw a TikTok today that was like rules if a plane is getting hijacked. And the first person was like, rule number one, kill me. The second you stand up <laughs> and start announcing this shit, I am over it. Just kill me. Truly. Number two, if you don't kill me, I will kill you. <laughs> so like, number three, sit down. Yeah. Like we're we're in the we're in the sky. What are you gonna do? Please Wait till we land at least. For fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah. My gosh. Oh, anyway. Uh TikTok has been an amazing like distraction he, well it's just really good to see other people using it as you know how many people i've seen that are like something funny 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 my mom is dead <laughs> like, what <laughs> funny 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 i watched my sister die <laughs> i'm like oh <laughs> and then in the comments people were like i don't think this is very funny and she's like yo it was my fucking sister <laughs> like yeah. i have to laugh or i'll kill myself yeah. i'm not getting like that's yeah. sad to say but truly i think that's what Bo said a couple times too. Yeah. but yeah. he's like i have to keep laughing yeah he said he referenced that in 30 as well um and and for the sake of going in order <laughs> yeah we're gonna go on to how the world works okay okay so how the world works is presented like a Sesame Street type situation. That one fucked me up too. Right? So Bo initially that starts. Is how the world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, by the way, every fucking song is just so catchy. So good. So Bo's talking like, you know, 
super cute, rhymy, like the kid version. Yeah. From every animal, big, small, everyone works together to make the world go round and we're all and we all just live harmoniously. And then Socko comes out, <laughs> which I'm so sorry to my sisters because I literally used to take a sock and shove it into their mouths. <laughs> I remember watching you do that. Yeah, I don't know. And I would call my youngest sister snot rag for some reason. I don't know why. Apologies about the snot rag and the sock in your mouth. <laughs> but oldest sisters are the worst. But then Socko comes out and he is like, sure, I'll tell you how the world works. And just the FBI killed Martin Luther King. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, all your history books are lying. Yep. Socko tells like the real truth. And it felt like what we experienced when we yes. were like, oh, this is what I thought the world was like. And this Everything is what is it's beautiful. Why wash, why wash, why wash. And then you get this out. This is what it's actually And like. everybody's like, actually, these are my lived experiences. And you're like, yep. what? Yes. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. And then I, at the end of it, Bo was like, I'm going to need you to stop talking and get in line and realize that you don't get to uh, be more than just a sock. Yeah. And I was like, damn, this is hitting hard. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. And then he kills him. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Which is it's why even harder. We should bleep out the MLK thing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, are you kidding? No. Okay. I mean, no, I'm kidding. Don't bleep it out. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but I just thought that was like funny because you and I had just talked about how we felt like lied, lied to, to our about whole the lives. world. Yeah. yeah. And how we were taught as kids that everyone loves each other and Actually, everything's fixed. Actually, you know what? We had, yeah, I know the whole Native American thing, but like we did Thanksgiving with them and now we're all cool. Like, yeah, we gave them land. Yeah. Uh, that was their land to begin with. <laughs> yeah. We gave it back to them. Aren't we nice? All right, here, have this turkey. And yeah, corn. Go, make, go make a turkey with your hand. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm, no, that's not how it works. No. Um, unpaid intern. Yeah, that was. A- so first of all, Okay, go on. Because this the- was one of my absolute favorite Fucking parts. Fucking same. Because they- oh. he <laughs> really sings this song and then he's reacting to <laughs> his song. <laughs> <laughs> he's reacting to his song. And as he's speaking about it, he's like, well, was this is not song- like exactly what happens in your fucking mind. I was thinking, yes. I was like, this is Jerry when she's editing. <laughs> yes, that is me. I said that to Shane. So he's reacting to it and he's like, so I was referencing this and this is what it's about and, and the first he was, reaction is just like a normal like oh yeah this is what the you know and it's yeah. kind of funny but like that's our that's my quirky thing that i do yeah or like this it has this kind of meaning this is really what it stands for i'm just trying to highlight the hypocrisy or whatever he said and so then he reacts to his reaction because it keeps going so yes. he's like oh i guess i'm Oh, now I'm confused. Okay, now I'm going to react to this reaction. He's like, here, I'm being a little pretentious. Yes. Um, I don't. Re- I, I say that things have meanings. They don't really have any because fucking Because I want to make myself feel important. Yes. And then it happens again, and he's reacting to his reaction. His reaction? And he's like, I said that was pretentious. That's actually a defense mechanism. Yes. Like, what? 100%. That is what happens to me. Is the I was longer, obsessed with that part. The longer I have to stare at us talking and the more I have to listen to us speak, the more I berate myself and it's question everything. It's literally like two different voices in your head that yeah. are like, you're being pretentious, blah, blah, blah. No, actually, I was being real and people are going to like this yeah. because like that. It's a constant battle because yes. I, and that's one of the things I've worked hardest on in therapy. That's why I don't don't listen to us sometimes. That's why it has to take me yeah. like a week to l- listen to an episode because I, I will do that in my head. I have worked really hard in therapy to tell the voices in my head that I am pretentious or that I am um, self-centered or that I'm all of these other things to quiet them and say, no, Jerry, you do care about people. You are doing this because you want to help people and because you believe in what you and Sierra are doing and you do think that you're funny and and it's scary sometimes because yeah. the the mean voice in my head that contradicts my validating voice sometimes wins, sometimes gets reinforced by people because unfortunately, I hand I hand people ammo. Yeah, I express my vulnerability. And again, some people that watch us don't have our best interest at heart. They yeah. don't really care about our feelings in a way, or yeah. the. You know, so they'll use that and be like, well, I didn't like this because you, whatever, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And we're already in our head thinking like, yeah. oh, should I have said that? Should I have said it this way? Should I have whatever? Yeah. And then it's like, fuck, 
did I come off that way? That's why I have to wait till I get like some kind of external validation yeah. before I can listen to myself. Because I need ridiculous. another voice in the chat. Yes. Helping me battle the other one. Yes. <laughs> That's what happens. Or so, I'll just be like, you sound like a fucking idiot. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was something that I was going to reference and maybe it didn't connect from my computer. But she talked about how... Who's she, the video lady? Yeah, okay. that they were more likely to be creative. Like oh. Creative people. People who had um, adverse childhoods um, were more likely to be creative. Yeah. Um, and show that resiliency. Anyway, um, so the next one that I wanted to talk about. First of all, sexting we're not going to talk about, but like I freaking loved that, that entire so good. <laughs> that entire that song. So good. The entire like Again, it was just such a comedic break. Yes. Such a comedic break. And again, I found myself being like, am I physically attracted to you? <laughs> because I yeah. know I'm attracted to your mind, but I wouldn't mind getting a freaking eggplant pick. <laughs> Even though we've said before, no, thank you. It would just be from him. And I don't even want him from Corey. Yeah. <laughs> I just want one. When he kept showing his nipple. <laughs> um, also, I don't want to hear anything about this brown on brown blanket situation. Yeah, it was, we should tell that now. <laughs> it was freezing yeah. down here. And so there's a bedroom down here. And um, I just took this from there. <laughs> so guys, leave us alone. If you guys can't tell, I like earth tones. So anyway. Um, look who's inside again. And the lyrics I that I that took one. from Look Who's Inside Again were trying to be funny and stuck in a room. There isn't much more to say about it. Can one be funny when stuck in a room? Being in, trying to get something out of it. Try making faces. Try telling jokes. Yeah. Making little sounds. Um, and then I was a kid who was stuck in a room. There isn't much more to say about it. When you're a kid and you're stuck in a room, you'll do anything. Any old shit to get out of it. That literally resonated with me if my mom is watching she she used to make fun of me or t you know yeah. that I w would not leave my room I don't know if that's what he was talking about or if he was grounded or whatever mm -hmm. but like I had depression and I didn't leave my room yeah. at all that was my comfort place and so I would come home from school I'd eat in my room yep. I'd do my homework we know because there was ramen noodles in your bed <laughs> on my fucking bed buddy <laughs> <laughs> yeah like everything I did I did in my room I would not leave because yeah. so like it's like a safe space in yes, a way but, but also I did want to get out of it because i was i was like i am going i'm trapped here i yeah. feel trapped in this place it's like going you can't leave because that's where you feel safe mm -hmm. but you also feel trapped i felt like suffocated and you it. have to get out but like getting I, out is also scary that's how i felt from covid yeah a hundred percent that's what covid did to me the first couple of times i was like isn't that bad i like yep. being stuck at home honestly i'm an introvert anyways i don't have to go to work yeah. it's fucking great like month two hit and i was like oh my god i can't breathe <laughs> i can't breathe in this place you know yeah. what i mean and then it started to be like will i ever get out again yeah i you know I'll do I would do anything to just be able to go to a restaurant, to be able to go to a movie, to be able to go to a concert. Yeah. And then uh, you know, it's just crazy how my mind went from this to this yeah. so quickly. Next one I have is 30. I'm not I'm we're not talking about all of them and we're not we are going in order but I'm not talking about all of them. Um but 30 was one I picked. I love that one. So Because I can resonate with it yes, so much. Yes, because we are about to turn 30. Yep. Literally. Oh my gosh. Did you see the TikTok comment? Someone was like, this is us in 20 to 30 years. I wanted to be like, I'm sorry. How, how fucking old do you think we are? How old are you, first of all? Someone said, this is us in our 40s. And I was like, hey. <laughs> what the Fuck! <laughs> you aged as a whole ass decade. Like relax. Just because we're loose with our poots does not mean <laughs> I've that been we're like old. that since I was a child. Okay? It's called IBS. It's called this fucking digestive system does not work properly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about it. Oh I told goodness. someone I had Crohn's the other day, and literally they, they go, "Oh my god, is that like when you shit yourself all the time?" <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. And I was like, "Uh, no." <laughs> But sometimes I do shit blood. Thank you. Like, who oh. says that to a straight... I didn't even really know this person. Oh, my God. Is that like when you shit yourself all the time? <laughs> I was like, I think that's incontinence, but okay. Oh, <laughs> Earlier today, I was talking to Shane, and I was like, trust your gut. 
and trust your butt. <laughs> Except for that time it said it was a fart and it wasn't. <laughs> I can't. And by that time, I mean seven of seven times. I want to trust my gut. But my gut is constantly trying to kill me. <laughs> True. Honestly, honestly, same. fuck my gut. <laughs> oh. So thirty. Okay. Um, when I was twenty, when he was twenty-seven, my granddad fought in Vietnam. When I was twenty-seven, I, I built, built a birdhouse bird with my mom. mom. <laughs> oh fuck! How am I thirty? I used to make fun of boomers in retrospect a bit too much. Now all these fucking Zoomers are telling me that I'm out of touch. Oh, yeah? Well, your fucking phones are poisoning your minds, okay? <laughs> so when you develop a dissociative mental disorder in your late 20s, don't come crawling back to me. <laughs> um, Love that. I just think it's amazing that, like, he is referencing the fact that our grandparents did these just giant things. Well, like, that was, I was such a big thing that happened i think to all of us because like Corey's parents Corey was just talking about he's like yeah i'm 27 i'm having my first kid it's so cool and his mom was like oh when i was 27 i had four kids by that time i had four children already was married and had a career going and like yeah just like acknowledging the difference in society right now and i don't was 25 she had four kids i don't think it's a negative thing that people are either waiting to start families or choosing not to have families it's just different but then when you get to that age it really does put you in a yeah because when i was 25 i was like this was when i wanted to be married i thought marriage by 25 obviously i'll be done with college i was gonna say i did get married at 25 (laughs) i'll be done with college marriage at 25 Babies before I'm 30. You did everything that I to do it. And I was like, I was like, check, check, check. Okay. I was like, one baby at 20. College failed. <laughs> um, no career yet, but it's coming. Um, man, 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 man. Um, <laughs> man, I want to marry. Sweet. New baby. Then engagement. Yeah. And college. Yeah. Like, everything is kind of happening. I did all kind of get to it before I was 30. So yeah. what's up, bitch? I just didn't get married. Well, and it doesn't matter, like, even if you did It didn't. doesn't matter. That's exactly right. It doesn't matter. Because I always said I wanted all my kids before I turned 30. Yeah. There's a good chance, possibly, that I could have another one. I said no, I wouldn't. But now I'm kind of thinking. <laughs> you are? I don't know. You're a fool. I am a fool. What no an way. idiot. <laughs> Honestly. I get it, though. I would wait five years, probably. Five four, years? Four to five years. You would want that. Okay, here's my thought process. You go five years. Yeah. How old are you when they graduate high school? I don't know. <laughs> What's 35 plus, plus 18? 18? Ugh, that's too much. Eight plus five is too hard. Well, okay. It's like 53 or something. That's exactly what it is. Okay. So good math. <laughs> Thank you. 53. Could you be 53? Yeah, fuck it. No, you wouldn't be 53. Would I be 63? Yeah. No, I'd be 50. If I'm 63, then fuck that. I'll never do You'd that. You'd be 63, right? All right, fuck it. Nope. No. 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 Fuck. Because <laughs> I would be 48 when this kid graduates. <laughs> I was doing math right now. <laughs> no, it'd be 53. Yeah. I think I could handle 53. 50's the new fucking 40s, babe. Is it? Yeah. Because 30s are the new 20s. Do we have any 50-year-olds listening to us? Let us know. How you feel? Mom? My mom's. <laughs> I was like, my mom's 53, I'm pretty sure. So uh, she... My mom's older than that, I think. Really? I don't remember. Yeah. They turned 50, and I'm just like, yeah, you're, you're in your 50s. 50s. <laughs> We're That's not counting That's all I need anymore, to know. Okay. Um, but yeah, I... I like that he brought that up, that like there's this existential crisis you feel when you compare yourself to people before you. But yeah. also there's also people younger than you who are now setting trends and old because enough I'm like, to I like feel like I'm the young back. Yeah, I feel like I'm the young guy You're still. Not. And then these people are doing TikTok trends and I'm like, <laughs> what's this about? I'm sorry. What's these things? Yeah. <laughs> What's what's this thing? <laughs> what's this about? <laughs> what's this? What's this thing where I put my fingers right above my <laughs> my my arm, my my elbow pit? Ice in your veins, baby. Is it? Because I thought it was for heroin. I, well, so did I at first, and I was like, "What are all these children doing? Yeah, I know. This is the new street drug." Well, I turned around at the park yesterday, and a kid was just standing there, <laughs> staring, staring at the concession stand, holding it like. <laughs> Until someone in the concession stand acknowledged him. It was almost like playing that little circle game. Noah does that now, by the way. Uh, so it's like, I think they're skipping a generation. Well, do it to me, kid, and I'll punch you. Okay? He I did it to you on Marco Polo today. You didn't he notice? Didn't? No, I didn't see. <laughs> well, good. Then I win. He doesn't get to hit me. <laughs> I'm still winning. I don't think he knows you have to hit people. He just like thinks it's funny to do. Yeah. But he'll go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that girl. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. 
Um, uh, People like that who are creators who I think are hilarious. I'm like, oh my God, look at this funny person who's older than me, obviously. And they're like, I'm 22. And I'm like, a fucking excuse me. <laughs> great, 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 great. You me too. Tiny little baby child. <laughs> Great, awesome. You were a mother at that point. I was a mother. A whole ass mother. Yeah. Not a great one, <laughs> but one. A great one. That was okay. Um, <laughs> that funny feeling. We already did Welcome to the Internet, so skipping that. Um, oh, there's so many good that things funny you feeling. Said that. There's so many. The thing that made me went, damn. The thing that, that made, made me, me went, damn. That's not a good <laughs> sentence. The thing that, that made, made me go, go damn. <laughs> <laughs> it's on now um is a gift shop at the gun range a mass shooting at the mall yes i went <laughs> i was she <laughs> oh i was she i can't do that where i'm gonna stick to shoot if you want to know something that makes me feel embarrassed for no reason it's trying to stay trendy <laughs> but like I even if i'm the it. age of the trend yeah so like even if i was younger i still don't think i could find myself going around going she <laughs> I feel like I'm bird calling. Yeah. It's strange. <laughs> I but like I shoo, go, shoo, shoo. <laughs> Bitch, I was shoo. <laughs> oh, shoo. <laughs> um, but yeah, a gift shop at the gun range and a mass shooting at the mall. That was so good. I was just like, fucking mm. damn, that hits hard. Mm-hmm. That hits hard. It's just the realization of like all of the things that are seemingly normal in our life that yes. like, shouldn't be. Yes. But, um, and then we talked about All Eyes on Me. There was something... Um, I want to read some of the lyrics from All Eyes on Me. He says, are you feeling nervous? Are you having fun? It's almost over. It's just begun. That reminds me of like the beginning of COVID. Yep. Like, are you feeling nervous? Like because of COVID. Are you having fun? Like because now shit's different and you yeah. get a change up of life. Um, It's almost over, but really it had just begun. But also, I felt the whole freaking show, the whole special i felt like nervous well that's what i think people i think that's what he was talking about because i think he knew uh, he knows what yeah what he's what emotions he's eliciting when he's doing what he's doing Mm -hmm. and i think he knew that people were going to be like oh my god are we is he okay should somebody check on him my god i made like two suicide jokes one time (laughs) back when i was kind of suicidal yeah and people were checking on me constantly and i was like hey because you can't joke about it that's true but here's what i used to tell people when i stopped joking about it that's when you should check on me because joking about it is kind of a way to be like hey you know guys i'm not gonna do this but like i do think about it yeah but i'm not going to and he said it's like there's a little bit of truth behind every just kidding he said it like three times something about killing himself and i was like and Corey's like i don't know i'm kind of nervous and i said think about people like robin williams nobody knew what was going on in his life so when he when that happened we were all like what out of nowhere he's such a happy guy those are the people that i feel like you have to watch for the people who keep it him oh it's the it's the saddest celebrity death of all time in my eyes but um those are the people that i think when they keep it completely closed people like that and people like us who like talk about it i feel like it's almost you know, if we weren't talking yeah. about it, that would be when I would be concerned. Well, for I think myself. that's when that's more likely when people are shocked by it. Yeah, I feel like people would be less shocked if something happened to Bo Burnham. Obviously, it would still be traumatic, and right. no one wants that to happen. But after that special, I think people, I think it's on their radar that his mental health is on their radar. Yeah, and I think that everyone's mental health should be on everyone's radar. Tr- I think we exactly. should all just be a little bit more aware of anyone and everyone's feelings. Because what he was showing you was what we've all we all went through this yeah. year. So the yeah. fact that people are just like so quick to be like, "Fuck you." Are you okay? I really want to fight this bitch. <laughs> I guess. Someone asked us why we don't have what? the mics behind. And it's because of it's because of space. Yeah. We would have to move the couch out. Which means that we'd be closer to you guys and that would be and it. And there's weird. not a whole lot of space behind the camera yeah. for the camera to move. And it would just be a thing. And also, um, I can't have things change now yeah okay i'm <laughs> we're afraid of change leave us alone <laughs> yeah this this is how it has to be for the rest of our lives unless life. someone messages me and says they physically cannot watch it like this then i will feel compelled to move it <laughs> but please don't fucking do that because <laughs> it will send me into a, a, an existential crisis seriously so please don't do that <laughs> um but the other part in all eyes on me that i wanted to reference is Heads down, pray for me. Heads down, now pray for me. And then get your fucking hands up. Get out of your seat. All eyes on me. It felt like, it felt like a, 
cry for help, but like, no, no it's we're just a good. Joke. We're yeah. good. Yeah. And well, I think I, that's again what he was trying to be like. Sometimes I'm good, sometimes I'm not. And when yeah. I'm good, I'm good. And when I'm not, I need help. Right. You know? And so, like, keep me. Just be aware, people. Yes. Just, just understand that the creators that you love are, are also real people. Who God. struggle. I can't. I know uh, there's not a lot of you, but the, I know there are some people that listen, and I just have to really run that home. The people that you watch are entertaining you. Yes, that is their job. Yeah, and they love doing it. We are real. We're real people. Yeah. We have um, your comments, like the girl that Jerry talked about before, who said that thing, and we commented a funny thing back. But like, what fucking purpose were you trying to serve yeah. when you when you leave comments like that on anyone's site? That are negative. Those people are real humans that yeah. read that. What are you trying to do? And luckily, we're in a place where we can read something like that. And shrug it off and be and like, And it yeah, not be it. a big deal. And not because we think highly of ourselves, obviously. Yeah. But mostly because um, I don't put weight in my humor. I know yeah. that I am... Worth something else more. Of that. Yeah. Same with my beauty. If someone yes. were to pick apart what I looked like, I don't give a shit. Yes. I know I'm more than just my outer shell. But it's just the principle of the thing and making... Uh, I understand that not everyone would be yeah. as... Um, Strong. Able to hear or read comments like that. And I don't think that there's ever a place for someone to make a negative comment that's not like... um. Like when I misspoke about, uh, what was it? It'll come to me. It'll it'll come to me. I promise. <laughs> I'm here for you until it does. What the mother father? <laughs> dissociative identity disorder. Yes. When I misspoke about dissociative identity disorder and made a joke about, um, split. Yes. And I didn't take accountability and for it. And someone corrected us in a very nice way. Yeah. And but th- was just like, there's nothing wrong with accountability for with, sure but like saying something mean unprompted and, and just to be mean, yeah not to gain anything out of it because the only thing you're gaining by telling us you're not funny is like do you want us to stop that's not constructive i can't no. do anything with you're not funny <laughs> no that's basically just saying like hey i think you guys should shut up i don't know why you have a platform right. and like what fucking if we're making anybody smile why does it bother you yeah that we're making any if i know it's not you good for you but if we're making someone smile why do you give a shit yeah <laughs> that that we're to you we're not funny yeah and again why would you want to make us stop? highlight this person um because i think she deleted her comment and i'm, <laughs> I'm happy that she did not because i wanted her to feel like bullied into deleting it she could have left it up and maybe it is i didn't scroll back to look i i did one time and i couldn't find it (laughs) but i just want i just want people to think a little bit more before they unfortunately we live in a in a society where like he was talking about how kids have access to all these screens and our worth is in these exchanges online. And it's easy for you to see a profile picture or whatever and not see that person as a real human being who has thoughts and feelings. Yes. You can just see them as like a content creator or even just like a picture of someone on the internet. And you type that shit out and then you send it because, I don't know, it makes you feel better in some weird way. It validates you in some kind of way. But what you're doing to them, is it worth it? And I also know that I'm guilty of this. Like, oh, me not, too. Not I've necessarily commenting on someone's photo, but I've like subtweeted yes. or like sub whatever, because I don't actually tweet, but like sub whatever. I remember posting something like, oh, out of all of the 60 selfies you took, that's the one you picked. Yes. I thought that was funny. Yes. It's not it's funny. It's not funny. Yeah. What I did was just make fun of someone who did maybe take 60 photos of themselves and picked one that they liked the best. But who wanted to put, like get a little bit of something from yeah. people on the internet, which who gives a shit? Or feel proud of themselves. Yes. So like, I don't love that. That's a very ugly part of me that again, I've worked on, but like I, I was using a negative form of yeah. humor to try to, to be funny. what make myself feel better yeah. about me not liking photos of myself to or get what? a couple likes from other people who yeah. thought the same mean shit yeah like, i don't understand it's not good and no. like 
that's why I don't go through all of my social media. But if I'm ever on my time hop and something pops up that's negative yep. like that, I'll get rid of it. Me too. Not because I want to hide it, but because that that's not who you are. Anymore. That's not representative of me. And I don't ever want someone to come across it and then feel I don't ever want to reinforce a negative message in someone's head. Yep. So um, <laughs> this for the humor coping ones probably wasn't very funny. <laughs> but Sorry. Yeah. We'll get um, back to you it. You got we'll some laughs some... and you got some serious shit. Yeah. We're really channeling Bo Burnham. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> but like with way less smart words and things. <laughs> like way less creativity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly. So sorry about that. But um, but go watch his special if you haven't because yeah. we kind of to- talked a lot about it. But you can get so much more from it. Like even the second, I watched it three times now. I know. Uh, I want to watch it again. And so do I because I get something new from it every yeah. single time. Yeah. Where I'm like, oh, I didn't catch that the first time. Oh, everything he does, Visual he does for a reason. Yes. Voila. Yeah. Um, God bless. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Um, we mentioned this on our, what was it? Exclusive episode. Um, oh, I want to say something real quick. Okay. I want to say... Uh, if you're getting the exclusive episodes, there's a problem with iPhone users right now yes. with YouTube. I don't know why, but on iPhone, you cannot subscribe to the the membership. Any iOS devices, so iPads or anything. Yeah, through the app. You have they, to go to the desktop, I a- think. Apple and like, um, YouTube? YouTube have like a disagreement Beef. and yeah, a contract. So you can't do it, which is fucking so annoying. Yeah. But so if you haven't... If you've been trying to get it, first of all, here's how you do it if you don't know yeah. how. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Right beside subscribe, there should be a join button. Hit the join button. It'll ask for your information yeah. to pay. Pay, and then under the community tab is where, is where you'll, you'll find. see stuff. Um, um, and if you can't do that, try it from a PC. If not, there's a link. I was going to ask you about that because I know you have the YouTube information. So maybe we'll try to find Oh, yeah. I might be able to put the link on our Instagram if yes. you can give me the link or if someone has the link. Yeah. Um, I I, I was unaware that that was an issue. So now hopefully that helps if you guys I didn't know either. I have an Android. So like yeah. it was easy for me to figure out yeah. how to do it. And then somebody was like, everybody was that was asking yeah. had an iPhone. And I'm like, I'm going to look There's into an this. issue here. Yeah. Um, but if you have our exclusive content at the end of the last episode that we uh, put out, we asked you guys if you had any suggestions um, for a pride episode, we really want to celebrate pride month. Yeah. So, um, our fandoms page is the best way to get a hold of us because there's a lot of interaction and where you can tag us on there and, and we're more likely to see it because our DMs, people are responding to us like so frequently that stuff is getting buried and we're it's really sorry. It's literally like, I've said this before, but it's like brushing your teeth while eating Oreos. <laughs> like, it's really, really hard. And like, we're really doing our best to try and respond to people. But like the second I find someone's name, like it, it gets, gets buried. Lost. Yeah. So um, we love how communicative communicative you guys are and how interactive you are mm-hmm. um but there's a lot of you when there's two it's of us um, so facebook ladies and fangents yeah that's our um pa- the community page yeah. it's really beautiful so if you have a post or you want to say something or you have like a question we've been getting a lot of dms that are like advice kind of things which i would love to take the time but i want if i give you advice i want to be um well, we could always do another Hey Ladies episode as well For if sure. you guys are interested in that. Yeah, but um, if you need something like right now advice-wise about on that page, even if we don't respond, there's so many intelligent, oh, compassionate, people, empathetic yeah. people in there who give amazing advice. If you feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah sharing. Yeah. It is a private page, so yeah. other people on your Facebook won't be able to see it um, if you ask questions or anything in there. But yeah. I... I have been noticing because I've been trying to respond to people and I don't respond to those ones because I want to give them such a heartfelt yeah. answer and it's kind of hard to do when... Yeah. Like I said, there's... <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. Um, but if you guys have any uh, requests or suggestions for a Pride episode, please let, let us, us know, know. Um, because we want to celebrate Pride Month, with Pride Month with you guys. <laughs> I start talking too quickly. I know. And my tongue gets really big. Why? That so, happens to me all the time. <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, thanks for hanging out, guys. That's a that on using humor as a coping mechanism. Um, we'll see you next week. All right, we're out. Bye.